Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again and I want to welcome everybody back to another video and today I'm continuing on with the latest paid request from Jamaral81 who wanted me to do well, he wanted me to do two album reviews and a movie review. This is the second album review and then in the next video we'll do the movie review. So I do want to, before we get further into this, I do want to let people know that I am going to kind of bounce around a little bit here with the paid request because people sent in non-horror, some people sent in horror, some people wanted me to review, you know, five movies, so I'm going to kind of bounce around here a little bit because Jamarol sent these in earlier and then he sent in another one, so I'm just doing his at once and I'll, I'll be doing that and, and I'm trying to get the non-horror stuff done first and then we can jump into that and then I can roll into some of the other stuff that I would like to get to and uh, I just want to let, let oh my god I can't talk <laughs> I just wanted to let everybody know what was going on with that and uh, you know we'll we'll try to speed the process up here a little bit I'm off to a little bit of a, a slow start um, but we'll try to get that going a little bit quicker here uh, the next day or two I'm trying to get caught up and then we can move into some of the other things I wanted to do but anyway I just wanted to let people know off off hand off off the bat here but the other album he wanted me to talk about is another replacements album called please to meet me which was chronologically the next album after Tim which is the one I reviewed last time <coughs> excuse me um and I guess this would be their their biggest album. You know, I guess this is kind of the one that everybody sticks out the most. Uh, but I really enjoyed this. And, you know, I didn't really put this together, but I have heard <laughs> some of their music before, which we'll cover here in a minute. But I did really like this album. Another solid album from a solid group, at least in my opinion. But before we jump into the rest of this, as always, if anybody else would like to send in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game, music like this, random thoughts, rant streams commentaries and anything in between that's what the paid request is set up for so again if anybody is interested go ahead send it in and i'll get to it as soon as i possibly can for those of you that have sent them in before thank you i greatly appreciate it it means you guys actually care about what i <coughs> excuse me about what i say and do here on this channel you want to see me try some different things it does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you would like to see me cover. I keep making them, and at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So thank you. Sorry, I needed a little bit of that. Um, but the replacements. Like I said the last time around... You know, I guess I lied, like I always do. Apparently that's all I do is lie. Because I didn't really put two and two together, but they did a song on this album called Can't Hardly Wait, which is featured in the movie Can't Hardly Wait, and I didn't put that together. I didn't realize that till I was listening to this album last night. I'm thinking, you know what? I think I know this song. I think this song was in the movie, and then I looked at it. It is in the movie, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm a doofus, so you guys know me. I just, I lie about everything. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, but I think this was a good follow-up to the previous album. Like I said, The Replacements, they were never a band that hit it big, that hit it huge. Uh, they definitely have a cult following. Uh, they definitely have, <clears throat> excuse me, their audience. 
they have their fans, which is fine. I guess I can count myself among them. But they they were never a band that exploded, uh, for whatever reason. They got. I mean, they. I think the biggest thing they might be known for is getting kicked off Saturday Night Live because they played Saturday Night Live. And they started cursing and, and all this other stuff, and then they were banned from the show. But later on, the singer, Paul Westerberg, played. And then after the band broke up, Paul kind of went off and did his own thing. You know, he's done a lot of singer-songwriter type stuff. He's, he's worked with Joan Jett. He's worked with a bunch of different artists and kind of is more known for that, which is cool. But unfortunately, the band never hit it big, never hit it huge. But there's a million different bands that never got to that spot either. But I really like it. Again, I like their, you know, 80s alternative rock, you know, when alternative rock was good. Um, again, the, the crap that they call alternative rock now, I don't even, I don't even want to hear it. I don't even want to explore it because I'm sure it's not good. And remember guys, you know, everything is rock rock is everything and all this other shit. And I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever, shut up. But I did really like this. I thought this was a good follow-up. This is the only album that the band did as a trio because the the other guitar player in the group, I don't know what happened. I don't know if he quit. I don't know if he got fired. I don't know. I couldn't find any of that info out there. But he's not on this album. And then he ended up dying in the 90s, too. But uh, he played on some of the demos. Some of the demos you can get, because I think they did it with all their albums. They did super duper deluxe versions, which you can find. And he played on some of the demos, but that was it. He never played on the actual album. So the band played as a trio. And then after the album was done, they got another guitar player for the live stuff. You know, which actually happens a lot more than people think. But there's a lot of really good rocking songs on here. You know, I can't complain. And it is funny because I was reading that with this album, they were trying to get away from their punk roots. And I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, I didn't really notice that with the previous album. I didn't really hear a punk influence in there. Maybe I'm just stupid, but I don't think I am. <laughs> I guess that could be a song lyric in itself. But they were trying to experiment and broaden their horizons and and you know go in different areas. And I'm thinking I didn't you know that's cool, but I didn't really hear a punk influence in their songs in their music. But oh well <laughs> so they were trying different things and the producer they worked with he uh, I think Jim Levinson was his name let me look it up here I have my phone in my hand you know again I hate using it but it is a useful tool at times <clears throat> excuse me Yeah, or Jim Dickinson. I'm sorry. Jim Dickinson was the producer. And I didn't know, but he was in Albert Collins' backing band. He worked with a lot of different musicians. And then later on, he ended up becoming a producer. He worked with Big Star. And who Big Star was actually a huge influence on The Replacement, so much to the point that Alex uh, Chilton, they wrote a song about him. And then Alex Chilton actually, I think, played on some of this album who was the guitar player in that band. So that's actually pretty cool. But Jim Dickinson, very interesting producer. Unfortunately, he passed away as well. He's no longer with us. But he's a guy, he's another guy that, you know, didn't hit it big or huge, didn't really work with any huge bands or groups, but the people he did work with all kind of have a cult status, a cult following, which is cool. But, you know, again, there's some really good stuff on this record. I can't complain. I, I like the length of the albums, too. They're only like 30 minutes because, it, remember, back then, it was still predominantly vinyl. You know, and then I think around this time, 87 is kind of when CD really started to take over. 
87, 86, somewhere in there. I think Def Leppard Hysteria, I think that was the first album, one of the first albums, that, and Brother, I think Brothers Enormous by Dire Straits, and those came out, I think, about a year or two apart. Those were the first, I think, couple of albums that really started to push people towards CD. And then, as they say, the rest is history. But for a band like this, I don't think CD was even really in the question. You know, I think it was more vinyl. So you can only get, you know, 20 minutes on a vinyl if your album is only 35 minutes and you have to split it up. You know what I'm saying? But I think that the album cuts at a really good pace because it's only like a 33-minute album. It doesn't overstay its welcome to the party. I think the songs are very well written. Again, I like the production on it. I like the mixing on it. Excuse me. I do really like Paul Westerberg's vocals. I can't complain about that. And his guitar playing is fine as well. So, you know, you sit there and you think, like, why did this band not make it? Why did this band not blow up? Because, again, like I said last time, they always got good critical reviews. And that's fine, that's dandy, at least, you know, people are paying attention to what you're doing, but if you're not making any money, if you're not out there filling your shows or selling your records or selling t-shirts or whatever, you're not going to get anywhere. Unfortunately, that's just how the business has always worked. You can be loved by Eddie, any, Eddie, yeah, Eddie, Eddie Van Halen. You can be loved by any critic in, in, critic in the world. I cannot talk. But if you're not making any money, if people aren't buying your tickets, you ain't going to work. You ain't getting nowhere. Again, that's just how it works. That's just how the business has always worked. Even in movies and everything, too. Like Steve McQueen told Chuck Norris, he goes, it doesn't matter what the critics think. He goes, if, you, if your movies don't make any money, you're not going to get any work. And it's true. But the band kind of had all the elements. And maybe it was too much, because again... You know, they get put in that 80s alternative rock category with bands like R.E.M. And I guess Sonic Youth would fall in there. One of my favorite bands, the Smithereens, definitely fall into that category. So maybe it was just too much at once. Maybe, you know, again, they didn't have good representation. They didn't have good management. They didn't have good promotion behind them. I don't know. Maybe they just didn't care. You know, maybe they just wanted to play their songs and play their music the way they wanted to. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. If we sell records, cool. If not, you know, we'll try harder, I guess. I don't know. You know, you always wonder, at least I always do. I always wonder, you know, why bands, artists didn't really make it. And sometimes, like with Brother Kane, when I met the guys from Brother Kane, I asked, like, what happened? What fell apart? Because Brother Kane was a band that their first album was 93 in the middle of the grunge explosion. They had, you know, number one hit singles. They had good, you know, catchy songs. And they and they were opening for Aerosmith and Buddy Guy and uh, Robert Plant and Van Halen. And, you know, they got MTV exposure. And then all of a sudden it just, it stopped. And I asked why. You know, and I, I'd like, I'd like to find that information out, whether it's a, a singular artist or a band or whoever. You know what happened? What went wrong? Or what went what went right? You know, because that's the question that sometimes people don't ask. You know, what went right? How did this? How did that single become number one? And you know, the videos and stuff. So there you go. I don't know. And it is and it is interesting about replacements because one of the songs on this album, which we'll cover, the video actually got banned from MTV, but the previous album, Tim, they did a video where they just focused on a speaker and that was a hit video. So again, it's it's a very strange thing. It always was. And then also, if we're talking the MTV side of things, their videos were only played at night, like on alternative nation or 120 minutes or whatever so that definitely didn't help with the mainstream you know people during the daytime watching mtv but oh well but it, it just it makes you wonder you know 
what happened? Why? Why did it not happen? Or, you know, why did it happen? You know, that's the other, the other side of the coin. You know, why were you guys the number one band in the world for five years? You know, why did all your records go platinum? You know what I'm saying? So it just, it just depends. You have to look at it from different perspectives, I suppose. But it is interesting that a band that is this loved and critical attention, you know, you got to hear their records, you got to hear their albums. They never hit it big. They never hit it huge. It's just, I guess, it's just one of those bands. But the track listing here is IOU. Really enjoyed that song. Alex Chilton, another great song. I don't know. Nightclub Jitters, really enjoyed that. The Ledge, which that was the video that got banned from MTV because apparently it was about suicide. Nevermind, Valentine, Shooting Dirty Pool, really enjoy that song. Red Red Wine, really good song as well. Skyway, I really dug. And Can't Hardly Wait, which of course was featured in the movie about 10 years later. Now, Can't Hardly Wait was actually recorded for the previous album, Tim, but the band got rid of it. They didn't want to do it anymore. Paul Westerberg said they, they just played it too much. They got tired of hearing it. They got tired of playing it. And the record company, the record label, convinced them, why don't you guys go back to this? Why don't you... There's something here with this song. We know it. Why don't you guys play with it? And they did. The only thing that was really different was they added the horn section, which apparently the band didn't want to do that. The band said no to that, but they were overpowered. But I like the horns in it. I think that really works, and that's a standout of that song. Because I'm also a person that, you know, when I listen to music, when I listen to songs, you know, what if that part wasn't in there? Would the song still have worked? Like, the one of the biggest ones for me is epic by faith no more killer song love the song always have if you take out the piano outro which i love would the song have worked would that song have been a hit would that video have been a hit i don't know but sometimes sometimes the record label is correct some most times they're not but sometimes they are but i'm glad that they put that in there and i'm sure the band has probably warmed up to it somewhat at this point but yeah they did not want that in there but they were overpowered they were vetoed on that and it worked because that is a really cool thing about that song that makes it stand out and I can't believe that I'm so much of a dumbass that I didn't realize that it was in the movie <laughs> and I love the movie but the more you learn I suppose but really good stuff definitely want to pick up uh both of, of these albums in the collection, you know, this is stuff I would listen to again and again. And, you know, check out more of, of their stuff and, and more of Paul Westerberg's solo stuff. I think, you know, they are a pretty interesting band. They got some really good stuff. Maybe they kind of got lost in the shuffle a little bit. You know, and Paul, after that, I think has done a lot of really cool, interesting things. You know, and I like people. like I like people that think outside the proverbial music box. I like people that kind of do their own thing and they don't want to work with labels. They don't want to work with, you know, songwriters or other people. They want to do it on their own. And I respect musicians more that do that, especially today, because everything today for the most part is is engineered and it's it's programmed and it's, you know, how can we make a billion off of this? You know, like the movie industry. But I like people that, that work outside those channels, you know, like Clutch, a, a band that I love, local Maryland, you know, Maryland band. Clutch has always been like that. They've always kind of done it their own way, and they have a huge cult following, and, you know, that's the way it should be, at least in my opinion. But good stuff. Uh, I'm glad that I got a chance to listen to them. I know Jamarall said in the, in the notes that, the Replacements is one of his favorite bands. They're up there with the Cars. I can't disagree about the Cars. One of all, my, one of my all-time favorite bands. And good stuff. But we're not done yet because I got a movie review for him that we're gonna knock out next. 
and then we'll keep it rolling. I think, yeah, there's only, it'll be the movie review that he sent in, and then there's another random video, and then we got a bunch of horror stuff to get to. So we'll, we'll get back into that in a minute here. And then, like I said, I'll try to work in some of the stuff I want to do. So I know, again, it's October 6th, it's Sunday, got off to a little bit of a slow start here, but I'm going to try to, from now on, power through and we'll just roll, we'll roll right into it and, you know, get it going and we'll we'll make the most of October here. But anyway, as always, thank you guys for watching, take care, and we'll talk to you on the next one. Later.